You've likely heard that the PhotoPills photography app is a Swiss army knife of photography planning apps. And while it is packed with tons of different tools, the planner tool is the one you'll use the most when planning your images. The planner is also the one that's most confusing to figure out. And so in this video, I'm going to review the four main sections of the planner to help you overcome any initial frustrations you may have in getting started. So stay tuned. Hey there photographers, Brenda Petrella here, and welcome to another episode of PhotoPills Friday, where we unlock the power of the PhotoPills app to help you improve your outdoor photography. In this week's episode, we're starting our deep dive into the planner tool. If you've ever played around with the planner tool, then you know that it's jam packed with functionality and features, and as such, it can be really overwhelming to navigate. So let's dive in. So the planner tool is organized into four main sections, the top bar, the map, the timeline, and the bottom bar. The top bar is actually a scrollable bar. And so if you swipe left or right, you can actually scroll through all of these different panels. And each panel offers you different functions and different information. So if you have the most up-to-date version of PhotoPills here in 2020, then you should have access to 11 different panels in the top bar. Notice that when you swipe through the top bar panels, there are these little white dots underneath the top bar, and that indicates which panel you are on. These panels provide information about the sun, the moon, twilight hours, the Milky Way, and many other things. These panels also provide different map layers or overlays on the map below. And these overlays can be activated or deactivated by clicking on the icons of the different panels. We'll return to each of these top panels and learn how to use them in a future video. The next area of the planner is the map section. You can move the map around by holding down your finger and sort of just dragging your finger around. You should see an orange pin in the map. Depending on whether you have overlays activated from the top panel, you may see other things like colored lines and arches and a black pin. And I have those deactivated right now on my screen for simplicity. At the bottom of the map, you'll see three buttons. If you tap on the middle white button with the plus sign, it will open up another bar and we'll call this the map bar, which shows a bunch of different symbols for different functions of the map. And you can scroll on the map bar left to right to access these different functions. If you would like these icons to remain available on the map, if you scroll all the way to the rightmost icon, to the one that looks like a padlock and click on it so that it's locked, now this bottom bar is sort of frozen to the map and you can have access to it at all times. However, if you would like to hide them again, then just simply tap on that padlock button. And now if you tap on that middle white dot with the X, you can close out the map bar. Of the three buttons on the map, the one on the left just shows whichever button from the map bar you last selected. And so it can work like a shortcut to that button. Note that this function is only available when the map bar is hidden. The white map button all the way to the right that looks like two layers on top of one another opens up various map settings. So if we click on that, at the top, there are two different modes, a camera mode and a drone mode. And I'm only going to be talking about the camera mode for now. Just under the modes, you can select what type of map you want. So let's click on that. You can choose from different types of Google, Apple, or OpenStreet maps based on the kind of planning you are doing or just on your personal preference. So for example, if you wanna switch from satellite to terrain, you would just click on terrain. And then in the upper right-hand corner, you could click on done and now you have a map that looks like a terrain map. So let's jump back into the map settings. Under the map type are different map tools, such as field of view, depth of field, and the sun and the moon. You can only select one tool at a time, and we'll go into each of these options and why and how you would use them in future videos. Below the map tools are the map layers. Note that some of these layers are the same as the map layers and overlays that we can select for from the top bar that we were going over earlier. So this is just another way to activate those map layers. And at the very bottom of the settings is a way of resetting the map layers to the app default, should you want. Below the map is the timeline or time bar. This is where you can scroll through a graphical display of time to see how the overlay features on the map and the information in those top panels responds over time. The timeline is displayed as a 24 hour period. And so if you press and hold on the timeline, it now stretches out to one hour intervals. And if you just press and hold it again, it will shrink back to the original 24 hour time period. Simply scroll the timeline to the left or right to move the timeline along. You'll note that on the timeline, there are different colors and the darkest blue color in the timeline indicates nighttime. The slightly lighter blue color indicates twilight and blue hour. 
The orange indicates golden hour, and then the palest of blues indicates the daytime hours. The yellow dots and yellow line indicate the rising and setting of the sun, and the blue dot and the blue line indicate the rising and setting of the moon over time. Just below the timeline graph, you'll see the day of the week, the time, and the date. If you tap on the left-hand side of the timeline, the timeline skips back to notable events such as moonset, golden hour, sunrise, blue hour, etc. And if you tap on the right hand side of the timeline, you then skip forward in time to those main events as well. If you tap in the middle of the timeline, it will bring up the time and date settings. Here, you can set the time and date of your photo plan, or you can click now to reset it to your current time. You also have the choice of having the app auto detect and adjust for your current time zone, or you can just set it manually. Okay, last but not least, below the timeline is the bottom bar, which has even more options for you to choose from, including find the augmented reality and night augmented reality or AR features, load, save, and more. The find button looks like a search button, and this can be a little misleading. It's actually not how you find locations, save plans, or points of interest. And we'll get into how to do that later when we talk about the load button. Instead, when you have the map set to your location of interest and you would like to plan for the sun or moon to be in a specific spot in your composition, but you don't know really what date or time or even if the sun would be in that location or the moon would be in that location, then the find button will help you figure that out. So you can use the find button to find the time and date for either the sun or moon at a given azimuth or elevation. We'll learn more about how to use this function in a later video. The next two buttons on the bottom are augmented reality features that are really cool to use when you are at your chosen location and when you want to see where the sun, moon, or Milky Way will be in your composition on whatever day at whatever time you choose on the map and timeline. You do need to calibrate the AR feature and it does need to access your smartphone's camera. So we'll learn how to do that in a future video. Next is the load button. And this is where you would search for an address or load a previous plan or point of interest. If you already know your location's GPS coordinates, you can also plug those in here with the latitude and longitude. Or if you have a geotagged image, you can upload it here and get the coordinates from the metadata. Next is the save button. And this is how you would save a particular plan or point of interest so that you can either return to it later or you can even share it. Lastly, under more, you can access the date and time settings again as we already described from the timeline. You can also manually set the altitude of the map pins, which is great if you have an actual map that indicates accurate altitudes, or if you know the altitude or adjusted altitude because you're on top of a building or some other feature of known height. Also under more, you can adjust for your height above the horizon manually, which will change the settings and the information around the sun and moon rise, set, and direction information in the planner. This is helpful if you're on top of a high mountain, say way above sea level, and we'll get into the nitty gritty of those features in a later video. Lastly, under more, under action, this is how you can share plan or point of interest with another friend. So hopefully now you are comfortable with navigating through the PhotoPills planner and understand how to access and turn on all of the different features. In next week's episode, we'll dive deeper into how to use that top panel of the planner so you can start planning some images. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.